complicated, hard, well thought out question. Um, we are not this for you. <laughs> um, and then hopefully we'll have some time at the end um, for you to ask your own questions. Um, but I'm pretty confident that we will hit pretty much everything. Um, so, Shana, do you have anything that you want to add as far as Yes, I guess. Um, on March 31st, we will have another wonderful panel uh, featuring people from the New York Times and not here. Sorry, women in the industry. So that we do not have details yet, but that's something I'm not sure if we're living on our industry. So that's the idea of the TSC. Then on April 9th, Tiffany will be at the TSU, and she will go on some awesome events and tell you what not to do to not see what the answer is. And yeah, the industry is fresh. I will rant. So get excited about that. Well, we'll kind of jump right into it. First, if you like to go around the line, really give the titles and answer any future questions. Hello, I am Shayna Bobbin. I'm a junior manager. I am Mary. Mary is I'm a manager. 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 I'm Tonight we'll look at we're going to talk a little bit about how each of you got to your specific place um, in your career and um, really what helps you to be um, discussed in So I'm curious to know on um, what each of you, um, how school put you in your mentor, or whether it was um, just a major or if you had a mentor in college, um, how did you how did you get to be in well, we are a online session of the I graduate in the in the For not the best school, but for some school that's not that. I don't know. I don't 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 I do so I actually, um, and most schools are at MTSU, you can't intern until you're a senior. And so I kind of ran into that issue, but it had to work out in my favor because I didn't intern in so many of them. But, yeah, so I'm in school. <laughs> <laughs> I have not. I have graduated in some. Um, I, uh, I went to a very small liberal arts college um, in Kentucky called Center College in Danville. It's an hour outside of Lexington, which is where I'm from. Um, in terms of my path here, it was very roundabout. I um, had a mother who worked in, um, in the television format. She worked for a division of uh, public television called KT, Kentucky Educational Television. So she started the mentor to me. Her youngest sister, my aunt, was a huge influencer in terms of the direction that my uh, career took. She has been living and working in New York City ever since she graduated from college. Um, she has been working for a syndicated radio company for decades. And um, she is somebody who I immediately aligned with in terms of interest. And so I very quickly vocalized that and said, hey, I'm going to take advantage here of that this isn't play. I will work as hard as anyone. You know, anytime you need a volunteer, anytime you need an intern, I mean, create me. So I started at a very young age uh, volunteering and flying out for different events, actually, in New York on my own time, uh, to work and be in and around the radio industry. And then I came home, and my parents were like, well, you're kind of crazy. And I said, watch me. And I started cold calling and sending out resumes to local radio stations. And I just pounded the pavement and it was relentless and ended up landing an internship at a local radio station, a hot AC station there. I interned with them 
And then the following summer, I went back up to New York and interned for my aunt's company for the full summer. And then decided that I was going to move to New York after college. And this was, I graduated from college in 2000. The job market was like, I could have walked in anywhere and landed a job. I mean, it was, the job market was completely different than it was now. But I ended up uh, working for that company, MJ Broadcasting, which was a four five year radio for about two and a half years. And the pace, and work ethic that's demanded in New York. I think it was great training ground. Um, and after that, I ended up, I wanted to be a little close to home, so I moved to National York for CMA for about two and a half years. Hopped over with a current board member, Ron Helton, and did uh, sales for him at r and and then ended up uh, starting Country Air Check with him. I was one of three people who started that company with him. Worked there for about six and a half years, and then they did over it. That was an idea. Sorry. <laughs> Perfect. No, it's great. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, well, I'm from Boston State University, and I think you guys have seen it. You know, do. Right there now. So when I was at Boston, we didn't have that. Um, we didn't have that, you know, a lot of information resources in the U.S. I was a corporate comms major with concentration on journalism and corporate communication. Um, I thought that I wanted to write your own stone and then be a music journalist, travel the world, that sort of thing. And then after a lot of interns, uh, a lot of uh, really going to the vision and um, working on a journalist newspaper, a journalist magazine, and I kind of decided I wasn't the route and the other one I wanted to go for a PR and a promotion sort of route. So my very first internship was actually with a radio station called 1.9 Buzz. <laughs> in Nashville, who had a sister station called 1.2.5 Party, which is where I met that gentleman right there, and she flew up for us. We've known each other for a long time. Um, I started interning there in promotion, and the way that I was doing really echoes what um, they are to say. I called that radio station for two and a half weeks straight. Every single day, I was like, I'm the operations manager. I never got a phone call back. They just saw me. Called every single day. Finally, after two and a half weeks, the promotion director called me and said, So we're kind of getting the idea that you want to <laughs> And so I said, Yes, um, we were for free. Did that for a semester, uh, which was my nice, uh, fall of my senior year at Austin And then continued working on a radio show, once again, totally free, entering the program. Halfway through the last semester of my senior year, that DJ and I will go and make a turn on the paper show. So while I was completing school those last few weeks, I actually started working as a, as a DJ for time in Nashville at DC. Um, graduated from school, continued doing that while during the day I actually worked with a college savings plan and PR and um, did that for about three or four years, left the radio station, um, left the uh, marketing job, and then went to the National Songwriters Association of National, which is the next public village in SAI. I was the communication director doing all of the PR and the public marketing, and then also was the co director of the Songwriters Festival, which I think is going on this week, isn't it? Um, so did that for a few years, and then I got the opportunity. A new label that was starting up on Energy Records. Um, so I took over the um, director of the publicity job um, and kind of did really that um, for four and a half, five years before leaving that job and then passed it over to the um, public. Like um, I started off at a college in Bismarck, North Dakota. Um, and I was there my first two years of school, and then the summer between summer and junior year, I decided I didn't want to work in insurance or be an expert. And I always loved country music. And so in June, I found Belmont on Google and I applied, and they sent me in July and I'm in August. Um, and so I did my last two years there, and throughout the whole time, I interned a ton of different internships. And I worked for a startup company the whole time I was there. Uh, one of my internships was actually with Jen at the University of Utah. Um, so I started there, and then after college, for those years, I worked with a bunch of random music industry type jobs and just anybody that would hire me. And then Jen got promoted from her role, so I got to do that job. Um, so. 
Um, I went to school in Orlando at the University of Central Florida. I started there when I was 17. I graduated uh, high school early. And um, my very first semester, luckily, I was able to intern. Um, I saw a flyer in my hall that said, if you love country music and want to have fun, call this person. So I started at the University of Orlando when I was 17. And um, that just progressed into four hours a week, full time, and then up all the way up to like 39 hours a week. So going to school. Working there in promotion and then also on the morning show, and going to school working like two other jobs. Um, but from there, I was hired to come here be the promotion director at WSIS. So that's how I got to Nashville. And when I got to Nashville, I knew that at some point I wanted to do management or the director side. So I was tirelessly um, just tried to meet people like me that were coming in the radio station. I was more excited about them than I was even an artist. So I was like, tell me what you do, I want to know, and um, just try to close those contacts. And um, I had a mentor trying to tell me, you know, every week, don't just send your resume to the people that you want a job with. Send them my name. What would you do? You said you're already in the job. What would you do if you were in that job? And that is the best piece of advice that I've ever gotten. Because you feel stupid, you feel silly, sending ideas to your mind. You feel really stupid, but I think it doesn't work. Well, I think people want to see that you can make and that you can do the job. So I did that, and then uh, I got a promotion coordinator job at MCA, and then from there I went to Rovigo, and it was only Rovigo, we didn't have to degree, right about management, um, and I took a kid to radio, basically whatever, you have to work with um, and worked with him until I left and went and helped start Valerie, which is part of the machine. Was there for six years um, before I came back and you know, I was working with you guys, and we have two more labels, and we managed our company. Well, my story started very similar to Chelsea's, except for I started in Nebraska and not North Dakota. But I went to I went to two years school there. I wasn't kind of happy, and I was I loved country music. I moved to Belmont. I ended up in Belmont. Um, and my last semester, I interned with a couple sisters in town from here in Tallier. And, um, and she was hired to do PR for then, then it was just for and they were starting to be. So um, she was hired to do a little publicity there. So I worked with her part time. And while I was working part time, I was only getting paid part time. I was working full time job for Wild Horse downtown. And um, it was basically one of those situations where I would go around from office to office, kind of like I was still interning, and just see what people needed and help them. And I learned a lot about everybody in the department while I was part time working there. Um, and I ended up doing a variety of different jobs throughout this. You know, Karen couldn't really pay me anymore. So I was like, okay, well, what else can I do? And I did a little new media, I guess, all the time. And they helped me out, and we got really kind of took me to their thing and just and through knowing everybody and being able to help out or whatever I needed. I did a variety of different jobs, and now I'm you know, doing great services. I've done about like 70 different jobs. So I've been in the media for about six years. Awesome. I'm just going to touch on a few things. Uh, again, it's so easy to just relate right. to students. So, um, something that I think we constantly preach to um, anyone that is pursuing a career in this business is to make sure that you do not compare your beginning to someone else's end or to their middle. Um, these ladies are a perfect example of that. It took them years to get to where they are, and you had to work along the way. Um, the other thing is persistence and resilience. Um, someone is always going to tell you no. Um, but I think it's up to you all to figure out how you're going to be creative and how to overcome those obstacles. Um, but this I'm sure can be frustrating. So I think that's where we're willing to get it from and, and it really, I heard something this morning that was so amazing on the uh, work fist. Um, and that is that it was a lifestyle, it's not a job. And it's such the truth. Um, so you have to be prepared to work really, really hard. Um, but again, remember that it took us all time to get here. Didn't happen overnight, and it took a lot of hard work. So uh, be okay with your beginning, and let it be a stepping stone to get you to this point. Um, so that, like, just to chime in, I don't know if the word you know resiliency. There's no word to hold on to more so. Um, I think it is the number one for me. If you ask me, the most important characteristic is you must be resilient. Uh, you must be resilient on the front end, whether you're trying to break in and start. You must be resilient in the middle when um, you 
have to take and absorb criticism because none of us want to be criticized, especially when you are working your tail off and giving everything that you have, and sometimes it's still not good enough because you're still in the learning process. I mean, I think you're exactly right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so now that we know kind of how each of them started, uh, where they came from, I'm curious to know if you um, all seem to be very happy where you are. So I, I'd love for them to understand a little bit about Berkeley's culture. What about the culture do you love and you want to make sure everybody in this room knows about? <clears throat> I think if we all can say one word. <laughs> do you want to say it at one time? Family. Family. Yeah. <laughs> it really is. I mean, like from my point of view, like they really, I mean, they want you, whether you're an intern or, and I'll say from, you know, we're on by one man, by Betty Brown, he's our owner. He comes into the office almost every day. He walks around the hall, he talks and says hello and gives a hug to yes. every single person. Receptionist, the interns, he makes a point to know everybody's name. He he is a man who, like, when I started, it was crazy to me how busy he was, and he will return almost every single phone call that comes in to him, or he'll answer every single phone call. And he doesn't know who it is, which is so, it's just so not unheard of. And, CEO, and I feel like he instills that in all of us. So, for, I mean, that's, for, it's just, I don't know, it's just such a family. It doesn't feel like I have to go to work every single day. I am genuinely, I care about every single person I work with. They are more than just people that I see at work. I mean, they really are. So, it's just, it's just so important to us and say that, that, you know, it's just so important to know personally. Um, I certainly am a Um, so we're going to kind of dive into specifically what each of you do within your role. Um, so if you can give a, um, I think probably the best thing is this, how do you support an artist in your role? Well, I would say when people ask me what I do, instead of just saying like, oh, I do social media stuff, stuff like that, um, the better way to put it would be just fan interaction. Uh, I'm kind of like the middle man between the artists, the label, and the fans. Uh, whether it's helping, whether it's running the media music group social media and trying to give like insight to our artists and what goes on there instead of just like straight promotion that you see in other places, like buy our song, go get this album, go see us on tour. We try and just like have fun out of it and show the whole like family fun side of our music. And so, and then from the artists themselves, I helped out with like how can you connect with your fans more, and how can you make that bond stronger and give them stuff that they wouldn't necessarily get somewhere else. Like we have lots of fun on our Snapchat and stuff like that. Every time an artist comes into the label, I just stand on my phone and say, hey, take a Snapchat for everyone. And so we just try and get that across that it's not just like straight promotion in your face when it comes to social media. Because that just everyone sees it and it just goes right out of your mind. So we're trying to get someone memorable and just trying to have the artist like make the impression on you. In my role, which I've actually only been in since October, I was um, at a different title, which incorporated promotion, both promotion and marketing. Now my title is 100 percent marketing, and there was no VP of marketing. Uh, before I, I kind of came into this role. So it's, it's a new, it's a little bit of new territory um, for this company, and yet at the same time, um, it, it's just an extension of what we've already been doing. How I support artists, like, I really don't even feel like I can say, this is how I do it, because um, what's key to my role is how, how do we do it, how do we do it together. Um, the, the, the most important part of my role is that I am in constant communication with all the other departments. That um, what's happening with promotion, I know what's going on in that world. What's happening with marketing, I know. I don't know what's going on in that world. <laughs> what's happening, you know, with Jen on the creative services side, I need to know what's going on there. What's happening with uh, the digital side with uh, Shannon, our VP of digital, who I wish were here tonight um, from that part of the she would have great insight. Um, but I know that 
we're communicating what's going on in uh, Natalie's world, that we're all kind of in constant communication and together we're moving, you know, the needle forward. I mean, how I support an artist, how we support an artist is um, making sure that the left hand and the right hand are talking to each other, that we all know what's going on at all times. And that might sound, okay, basic, but we have three labels and a management company and a publisher, and you're in the unique situation where your CEO is your A&R, and then he hears a song, and it's like, that's a song, and then all of a sudden it's like, okay, so we got to make a plan. So it, there, there is, um, it, you know, there is some difficulty there, and so it, it's not as easy as it sounds, making sure you're in the situation. I think the second thing is how we're supporting artists is that we, we have three labels, and I mean, so many active artists at one time. So it's about making sure that each unique, you know, baby, that each unique person, um, you're staying on message, that you're really drilling down, and you're trying to figure out every day, how do I move the needle forward? If I can't move it six feet forward like I want to, how do I move it six inches? And then we look back in a month and go, okay, we moved it, we moved it six feet. There's just, there's so much, never before has there been so much demanding our attention at all times. So how do you cut through that and how do you move the needle forward together and, um, and make a difference for the artist, even if it's not a humongous difference that day, but something where you're just constantly moving the needle forward, creating buzz. Well, I'm like Mary Flora said, we all, everyone else here, few other folks that are with us today, and we all feed off of each other. Our, our specific goals, I can't execute my job without these people. And without some people that are not here. I don't think any of us know how to make this and make our group work and have it without this and make our group work with each other. Um, so that team, I mean, that's a really important thing to, to realize. One plug of will doesn't, doesn't will, all well, none of us will. Yeah. But where I come in specifically, um, with the help of these folks and some other folks not present, is when it's a brand new artist, you know, putting together, working with a professional writer, put together a bio, put together a story, back together, and finding out everything that we can about the student that we just signed. What makes them shine, what makes them special, and what's our best story? What's our going to be put together some new materials and bios and one sheets? Um, so something that small and that what may seem ancillary is something that we all do as in our lives. Um, I go to TV appearances when the time is right and we have a single that's on fire or, or an artist that you know, fits a, a tall platform. I work with Rolling Stone, with Good Safe Day, and Weekly, Magazine, to play stories. Um, Online blog editorial, um, you know, publicity is you think that you pick up the doctor's office and read it every day, or pick up the newsstand, or type in a search engine, go into the search engine, type it online, and read the story. That's, that's a big part of what I do. The other part of what I do is really like press agent. I feel like what I do. So as we keep for all together assets and information. Um, I keep the information to the different departments to try to help you I work a lot with the National Center for Radio Programs. So, like, while you're going to the morning show, and actually, it's like programs like that for um, the clients I kind of work with. And so, I really work on trying to figure out ways that we can get our artists exposed using those platforms. As well as partner with them to get them content and artists and exposure that they need on their programs. Um, and then at the same time, kind of try and find ways to figure out how we can get our artists played on the programs more, to get them more um, on air exposure across all the radio stations that they're all on. So, in a nutshell. Um, so, my job is unique in that it was created uh, when I came over, which um, is a blessing because I know, like Mary Forge was saying, we can kind of get to. Interact with every department. Um, uh, what my love is is radio. I've always done radio. I've always done that's my title is promotion. So we have three separate promotion staffs. Um, each of them have a VP and then regionals that work the country. And um, a, a lot of the time, I'm going in where they need me, where they 
you might have help or have a relationship with you know one of the radio guys I've worked with for years, so I can go in and maybe help them there. Or if one person's gonna be with the house here and then you know Thompson Square is gonna be somewhere else, maybe need someone to help cover with Thompson Square, I can do that. Um, so I kind of fill in where I'm needed when it comes on the radio side, but again, each team has their own or each label has their own team. So I'm kind of just thinking of where I can help. Um, and then on the other side, I've been doing a working a little bit about publishing and the AR side. That was very more soft as said, like our owner and CEO is our AR guy. Um, but he or John Lopez is our executive vice president. They can't be at every showcase in town, they can't take every publishing meeting. And that's a side of the business that's really important for us to have an interface and, and be, you know, uh, tangible on them and be, you know, for the publishers to be able to pitch songs to us. And, Again, you know, any is the end all and we all where that is concerned, but hey, I think we also need our filter and some of these having application. So that's been really fun for me because I'm just learning that part of it. And um, it was really cool. Again, I've worked with some artists from the very beginning, like Justin Moore and Brandon Gilbert, and you know, Florida from Lyme when I was in her um, on the big meeting side. So I've kind of seen uh, that's probably my favorite thing is to work with the baby artists and kind of see what they're able to accomplish. And so I do a little bit of that too. So we've got a great guy named Tony that we just not have got from Eden and a couple of those other million dollar babies that are kind of coming to the building all day every day just wanting to you know interact with us and you know and not step off of us. So I try to take as much time as George Rayburn and all this for an hour and a half of their day. But that's part of I feel like my role is to give them that decision because that's gonna play into the future when we start wanting to up. So um you know and there are others that like me like I try to help these guys and so I'm like so I kind of get to do a lot of different things and still travel quite a bit, which I love that just kind of become my way of life. And maybe that's what I'm going to do. So, um, a little bit of everything. Well, I, um, I do a lot of, uh, basically, I handle photo shoots when it comes to our artists and video shoots. Um, a lot of my work now close to Mary Fortune when it comes to getting basically a lot of the assets, um, all of the, when we put out singles and all of those kind of things that we're Producers to get the, the music and make sure we have a master copy that I distribute to everyone and to album. I put all the album packaging together. And um, a lot of my role is, is making sure that everyone has the correct assets and what they need, when they need it. And, um, so it's organizing that, making sure everyone's on the same page, being the middleman between those the managers, and um, organizing you know, certain video directors or with a photographer, or, you know, organizing all those details and making sure that others work out and everybody's on the same page. So there's so many people involved and you have to have somebody that's kind of, you know, just making sure there's communication there. So that's a lot of what I do. There's, you know, bits and pieces of other little things too, um, everything from, you know, their videos to, you know, just little things like that. But it has to do with the visual, creative aspect of music. I usually have my hand in it somewhere or another just to make sure that so I'm going to ask um, kind of just some general questions, and then I think each of you will probably have something to, to add to it. But I'm curious to know um, the conversations you have as you are building the brand of an artist. Uh, sometimes they come in and say, this is who I am, and you're like, ah, you probably need to drop that because it's not you, and you can revamp. Uh, I, I, I know that I've heard stories, um, ever since joining the industry, of really great branding opportunities, and then some ones that you know, took a little bit of work. So I'm just curious to know how, um, if you can kind of reiterate to them how important the brand is of an artist and how important it is to you all to make sure that everything they do really is up on that brand. Let's talk through branding. I think it's incredibly important. I mean, we just had this conversation today in um, a marketing meeting about, you know, a particular subject that I want to go into about staying on message and how important it is that you know we know what the message is and we gotta make sure that everybody else is on the same page with us, you know. So I mean um I think when you're crafting a brand it's just like your artist, it's it's a unique scenario and uh, for each. Um I think that it, it is a huge challenge to try to maintain that through everything that you're doing. Um, you know, part of what makes us great, you know, as a company can also at times be challenging because, um, you know, maybe unlike the major, we move quicker. And that's, that's a great thing, but that's also a challenge in the sense of, okay, well, we're 100% full steam ahead. And uh, great, we're 
what we're doing, but are we all on the same page, literally? Like, are, does everybody know what's going on? A decision has been made, we need to make a decision about a song, we're going to radio, um, but are all the rest of us on the same page too? Because we want to make sure that the message is consistent. I mean, I think if you talk to anybody, that's a, that's a huge challenge, trying to stay consistent um, across the board, because it is so important um, to, to uh, each artist to, to stay on message and to consistently make sure that we're all saying the same thing um, to, you know, to help create, you know, that artist, that, that artist you can make so. Yeah, 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 totally. Now, do you see that, especially from like your point of view, when you are constantly you're kind of the communication person to always be hammered in, like, no, this is the brand that we need to move with. And obviously, yeah. well, yeah, we're, we're we sure had a conversation today that same thing about one of the things that I do like to do is with I just had to completely revamp materials. So, so we're working with an artist that I've been for years, and I'm kind of coming out of the gate with something new and revamping. And I work with buzzwords. I, I think it's really important to be one of the things I'm sitting around and, and, and just really thinking, okay, when I listen to this song, how does it make me feel? And I listen to these lyrics. What, what imagery is I get, do I get in my head? What are we trying to convey? What are we wanting to see the listener to buy into? And I don't think that's a great place to start. But it does look like the artist is saying, we all have the same thing, and that has to be. Label going into the next, the artists themselves, radio, and, and it doesn't matter how quickly you can do, you know, your messaging on the system. I think brand is everything. I don't think, I think everything's built around the artist brand. And, and, and honestly, I think the best artists, the most um, successful artists, you know, build their brand. They come with it. And we essentially say, I, I probably talk about that 40,000 times a day because to me the most the most frustrating thing is having an artist that doesn't know who they are or they just want to be who they think you guys want them to be. But I'm like, maybe if I do this, the band is going to buy it. Maybe if I do this, radio is going to play it. Um, again, some of the most successful artists I've worked with are from the college and who they are. Bradley Gilbert, who does not give a crap if he hears nice and he does not care. That's more than not take off his. Cowboy out, go to your line, people are making them all over town and look at them now. And they stick to who they are. Same with Eric Church, Miranda Lambert. So you look at our Jason Alpine, you look at the ones who are most successfully um, selling, which is what our livelihood is, and they are unapologetic about who they are, and they never different from that. And it, our job is just to essentially that constantly. And to find and to find opportunities that match them and to go out there and go chasing it out. Um, something that I think is um, often not said and, and spoken to specifically with um, the polygraphic of radio. I'd love to um, hear what your thoughts are on just how important radio is to our format. And I think you think that um, it's just something that is really well known. Um, but I certainly see yeah. and I've learned a great deal about it. Last year. Um, so, yeah, you can just talk about what radio means to specifically to our audience. The two with 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 the two I mean, it's absolutely the, the place where you discover music you love and you're not going to go and specifically search for it. You hear about that great. I mean, there's so much that's audience there for you to be on. I mean, it's game. It's so good. Yeah. But obviously, there are a lot of ways to be so good. So, in terms of music discovery, yeah. 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 yeah, it's incredibly powerful. Um, I mean, you just think about every night and how you turn on the radio. Almost you're plugging your phone, you're specifically over something. Just, it's always there. Whether it's background or it's something that you're just saying, it's always there. So those artists are always right on the And I know I keep going back to uh, Greenland and FGL specifically, but those guys had great careers on their own. 
they had no radio airplay, they weren't making great money, they were touring, and we get home a couple of one records and they're superstar level. That just proves that country radio is still key. Um, we say that to our artists all the time. We see Kenny Chesney is still going to visit radio when he has new album. He's still making the radio call because he gets it. It is always going to be fun. And then on the flip side, I was interested. I didn't know everybody's stories up here when we were on our story, and three of us started in radio. And that's where, you know, and, and when I'm trying to give um, advice to you guys or advice to the I'm like, try to get on part of one of these country stations right now. Because you're going to meet people like me every day. That is the best thing I've ever seen. I mean, you can do this work at radio station. Well, and I, I, I would say, even though I still have a lot of radio, I think we worked on the road, and then even though I'm on a publicist, I have never actually worked in the radio course or the record label. Working at Pablo Radio Group is obviously what got me the job. Records because Scott Rochetta, who is person that was a radio guy, and he joined the public system, understood how paramount radio is and how to work with the radio promotion team in Tampa. And that was the reason I got that job with the other candidates. I would urge anyone that wants to work with a record label, anyone that wants to work with Alan Hart's management team and marketing, with CMA, or any, any sort of job along these lines, do an internship. Well, because like you said, people don't know a lot about radio, so when you have a radio experience, you're like, well, this is And it just, I think, helps you in any role. Like, if you just can at least understand how it works, understand the radio point of view and the aspect of it, it just will help you immensely. Like, when I started to go after it, and things I spent, uh, you know, years as a coordinator and I was a regional, and that has helped me, even in this position, just understand it. Because I feel like it's really, you can get it, but it's, it's hard to understand the much you actually. If you don't look at going to Mars to see it, you don't want to look at the tour marketing world or the tour booking world. Working at a radio station and knowing how this presents, I mean, that's, that's such a huge asset when it comes to an interview. And if you have that, you're going to be one of the few. I have a lot of friends that have jobs from heaven who have nothing but radio. And yeah, they're always going to be asking questions about it. It's like, they would be so much more their head than the person that had the same you know, the same property. I love it because you know we have 20 other chapters outside of Nashville and um, they are always so focused on getting to Nashville and getting out of the chip. And I'm like music the music industry is in your yeah. region already. Like try to impact radio first to uh, you know give boot skills that to get here. Um, um I'm Going to the other kind of side of um, entertainment, um, how large shows television, like what role does television play within, uh, you know, within any of your artists? I mean, is television still a really good way to discover music or to promote? <laughs> uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, the one thing you have to realize about, about it though is that. Okay, so I need TV to help grow the audience of my artists, but the TV owner also has an executive producer who is their boss, and they're also looking at me to help grow their numbers and I need as well. So it's a push and pull, it's a negotiation, and that is where the great relationships come in. And that's where FaceTime comes in, and then when you pull the staff, well, and that's just looking at us to, to build a radio story to go. She can't go to those bookers at TV shows with no story. So it's like, it's a catch 22. And that's what I think it's really, we all feed on from each other. And it's also what's going on here. We can't every single company we each other. Yeah, I'm going to my radio program, so I'm going to go to the audience. 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 I'm going to go to the Awesome. And just to go back to the radio portion of it for one second, I mean, the, the, so many times, I mean, that story for the artist who starts with radio. You know, it's about uh, building a success story at radio and then uh, building off of that. And that's just why what our radio profession team do are just so incredibly important. Um, what, how big of a role does social media play now in the um, I would say that it is a huge, huge portion because nowadays everybody has some form of social media. There's no kids out there who don't have either Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, something like that. 
that in this day and age, like people in my generation are so used to having accessibility to celebrities, to artists, to people that they follow. And so they have, you kind of have like a built in, like, why, why can't I talk to the artists I love? Why can't I talk to these celebrities? I should be able to. And so it's so important for not only artists to have their social media, but to utilize it and to communicate with their fans and build their relationships. Because without the artists having fans, none of us will be here. Like, if there's no fans, there's no jobs, there's no artists. And so it's, I think it's one of like the biggest things is to communicate with your fans and build those relationships because you want them to come out to your shows, you want them to buy your music, you want them to get your merch, stuff like that. And the, some of the biggest artists, like take Taylor Swift, she has the fan relationship that nobody else has. And that's one of the first things anyone will say about her is how she has this connection with the fans. And so it's the people who do things like that that stand out from well, and to brag on Gina, she literally taken over our DVI music group principles, and she does an incredible job if you guys don't follow us on all <laughs> um, but, but the point I want to make about that is I feel like maybe not you guys, because you guys have access to us all the time, you know, we live in town, and we're very well close to us, but this fan, I mean, I, I go out to shows to cover a show, and I'm a fan, who so I'm like, oh my god, you work for Jason Aldean, or you work for Randy Houser, and sometimes that's the closest that they're going to get to that artist ever in their life. So I feel like we're such a great, um, you know, liaison to them, kind of like, you know, we were talking about before, but Gina does a really great job, because I do, I believe that our company should have a face so that we can interact with you guys and interact with our fans, and she is how I had a concert, and she has a great job of it, and I haven't had that before, so. So, um, I'd love to um, hear from each of you um, a favorite project that you worked on happily in the Something that you're super proud of that you just think kind of the world of it. It was your you know, labor of love. Well, I've been here a very short time, but I, I've been working full time for just over four months now. Um, so I haven't had all that many projects that I've been a part of, but I guess one thing would be a little CMAD shout out here. So I, I can I can say that 100% I only got my job because I was part of CMAD, like with 100% sureness of that. Um, I happened to be at CMA at a showcase that Chase Bryant was doing, and I was just in the right place at the right time. And my now boss, Ned, overheard me talking about something about Facebook. And ended up approaching me about an internship, which again, I can't intern until I'm a senior, and so it ended up being a part-time job, and I ended up being a full-time job. And so that was nothing to do with your question, but um, <laughs> so Chase Bryant has, Chase Bryant and CMAPU have been the main, the sole reason that I am here working. And so I, uh, I started, uh, matching Chase up with some CMA and EU chapters, and he went and he did a thing for uh, Clemson and Ohio State, and um, we'll be doing some stuff over the summer when all when there's a little CMA and EU summit thing. Um, and so it's it's been a really cool thing. Like definitely the the thing in like a full circle moment. It's just a few short months to go from being there as a CMA and EU member watching to be the one. At the labels, they're getting it with those chapters. So, but that is pretty fascinating. Um, to be honest, for me, I, I don't think it's happened yet. I mean, like in the sense of there's one thing that I just, you know, I can point to. And part of that is because I've been in this role, you know, about six months. I'm still getting my feet wet. I've been at PBR just over two years. Um, and. So I don't necessarily think it's happened, and that's not to say that there hasn't been um, incredible passion about the things that I've been working on. Um, you know, it's, it's, I always laugh at that saying, it's like, oh, it, it, this is just a business, it's not personal, it's just a business. I mean, what are you talking about? It's, it's incredibly, incredibly personal. Uh, we're dealing with people, and we're dealing with uh, their dreams, and, um, and I take that very seriously. Incredibly personal. And I remember saying to me one time, ah, oh, you know, 
it's my life, it's your job. And then we got to fight for us. <laughs> 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 like, are you kidding me? You know, so I'm going off on a tangent, but I don't, I don't really feel like it has yet because I, I want that moment where I came into this company and Jason L.D. in the party and established a superstar. I mean, he is an A-list act. We have um, a whole variety of artists that I feel very strongly about. They're, they're, they're at different levels in their career, but are ready to break through that next glass ceiling. And so I think that I will be able to point to something when we got to that point. Yeah. You know, I, I feel like I'm still in the middle of the battle right now. Um, and that, that's not to say there haven't been great moments like, you know, seeing Justin Lynch get his first number one. Um, you know, or watching Lady Cowser get, you know, three back to back number ones and, and really being on the verge of like, breaking out into that next level. There have been a lot of successes along the way. Okay, this is a huge question for me. I love working with new artists. I love working with brand new acts, helping them figure out what direction they want to go in, working with them on their very first piece of music that they've ever released. Because, like Mary Farr said, we are in the new things. We are dealing with people like realizing their dreams, with being able to make a living with what they love. And I love working on posts with new artists, you know, whether it's the first magazine piece, the first TV interview, um, the first time it was on, on the radio. I mean, to me, and, and I guess, you know, we can look at it as everyone is a new artist at some point, you know, along the way, so I can't do it. But, but no, to me, that's the most fulfilling and most exciting. Helping those students be realized yeah. and in those very first seven sets. Yeah, kind of playing off of that, you can't really, I mean, we all contribute in large ways and small ways so it's really hard to say like this success was my success because it really was not at all. Um, so it's kind of like uh, any artist success at all is my success and it's obviously like our shared success. Um, I mean, there are definitely little successes of, yes, I put this into their schedule, or just, you know, those little things, but um, there's not really all of the little things that happen in our career that we love success. Um, I think, you know, I've only been back in New York for just a little bit of my year, so kind of like what Mary Forrest said, I thought there kind of been all the new COVID disease that has happened. But something that really stuck out in my head is um, I really I got to go out with Chase Bryant on his radio tour because we had a new Southeast regional at the time and that was my old region. So I got to go out with him and with him and um, to, to kind of help that team train her at the time. And it was really cool to get to do that with him. And then he still has obviously miles and miles to go and, and years of success in the for his career. But one of my favorite things is I kept in touch and still do with some of the random people and his um, his booking agent called. They had called me a couple there a couple months ago. Hey, you know, is there any new artists that you think is doing well out there that you're excited about or looking, you know, for the tour? And I always try not to like tell say our artists because I don't want to be self-serving. But at the time we hadn't even shipped the signal to radio yet. But I just knew in my heart that this kid really could be something and I said Said to myself, I'm just gonna have to tell him. I said, Hey, I don't think you've heard of this guy, Chase Bryant, but you know, we've got X amount of stations that have already committed to adding it, you know, out of box. Um, we got this many quotes from big radio guys, and said, well, I'm gonna have stuff over. So I did, I sent him like a list of quotes that we had and some stations that were excited about him. And then, you know, of course, there were three, four, five other people working on that. So I will never forget when John Luba and Chase called me from a hotel room somewhere, and they're like, He's got a friend. Oh my god, because I knew that was gonna be so big for him. I mean for new brand new artists like that to get on the tour like that, especially without having a single radio, um, that was one of my most excited moments. But like Chelsea said, we all you know, contribute to the success together and I still feel like we have, you know, I personally have years to go and see a lot of stuff like that. Well I there's a lot of moments that pop in my head too, but one specifically for all my roles at BBR, I was in regional for a little bit. And throughout the entire time I was regional, I worked on or worked radio for a song called Carolina by Mom. And I'm telling you guys, like, <laughs> no, this is a big <laughs> one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the regionals are some of the unsung heroes at times. Like, it is so, I mean, it's so hard. It's difficult. Like, you are told no a lot of times. You know, you have to try, you have to try, yeah, exactly. You, it's 
almost like you have to restart your job every single week. You're trying to get ads for every Monday. And guess what? When Monday's over, start to get on Tuesday. And so we tirelessly worked that song for me for the entire year, 100%. And it was just like, I learned so much about myself and what I was capable of. And it was just it was a very trying time. It was a very exciting time, especially with you artists. And those guys work so hard. And it makes you want to work that much harder for them. And um, it was just a, it was a special time with them. It was just so I don't know, it was like, it was very exciting when it got finally that song finally hit. It was just one of those wow moments. How many weeks later? It was a lot. But then I was like, yes, exactly. So it 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 definitely is you know it's trying, but it's so amazing when it all you know. Really, from that perspective, that was even higher. Yeah, it was that's the entire period. And then we shipped the single in December and then ended up number one, like over the break is how it ended So, yeah. so I mean, it, it doesn't come easy for artists either. You know, so. I think uh, people forget how populated our industry is. Like, everyone's here, someone that's always working on something that you have no clue what's happening. Uh, it's so bizarre and amazing at the same time. Um, I kind of want to shift gears, and uh, I think this will help kind of wrap this up, but I'm curious to know, just industry speaking, um, what is something that makes our industry free um, in comparison to others? One thing is the, the Nashville industry industry is so unique compared to other genres and other cities. Like, if there's anybody you know, I mean, there's so much problem. Uh, and I think that's so unique compared to any other industry. You can be in the industry, just the whole town is There's some challenges, yeah, so great. <laughs> the box, but. Nashville <laughs> 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 uh, natural, natural basic media is so different than it is in LGBT as well. Here, like GDC and CBT share a wide range, just so, you know, they both can get the same good shot, and good background, there's no competitiveness. Everyone's just there to, you know, help each other and do the best that they can. It's about elevating the artists and elevating the music and the industry as a whole. So, so, if you go to LA or New York, there's this thing called um, red carpet rules in Los Angeles. So, if you're on a green carpet or a movie premiere carpet or something of that nature, you cannot get upset if somebody don't go to you right in the ribs to get into an interview that you are waiting for with your ass because it's great carpet rules and it's all very well. And here on the CMA carpet or you know another natural based carpet, I'm sorry, you will hear I mean it's very polite, it's very respectful because everyone has this humble elevating industry. So that that's a huge yeah, this is a relationship now. I mean, if there's one thing that I would say, and I think I'm based on what everybody else is saying, this is a relationship town. It is about um, meeting as many people as you can, networking, uh, not being in bridges, um, and always trying to you know make that that next connection. So that you know, I worked here in this building for two and a half years. One of the great things about this building is it has a board of directors um, that's comprised of every um, different field of the industry. And so you touch all those people and you meet all those people and you try to work hard for those people and impress those people. And that's where your next gig or your next connection is going to come from. And then the way that I uh, left CMA is that a uh, a board member hired me, Lon Hilton hired me to come work at R&R &R and then go over to Andrew Yerchek. And that's another scenario where you're in relationships. You're talking to, um, I didn't want to go do sales, I was like, oh, I don't want to call, I don't want to sell anything. Right? I'm not a salesperson. And what Lon explained to me was, it's not about sales, it's about having a relationship and hearing what the person across the table needs and building that trust and building that relationship, and that's how you're going to succeed. Build a relationship. I'm going to thank you, Mr. Spain, on what you said. We go to breakfast this morning in a lifestyle, not an hour, and it's actually not the more true because, and then and you say, you know, be prepared to work hard. I don't even feel like I'm working hard. And that sounds crazy. I mean, I do when I'm traveling, it's like, we're going to be getting up to go to the airport, but 
none of us say anything of texting or emailing with our radio guys at my or emailing about a project that we're all working on because it just comes second nature. And if that's not in you, if that's not in your heart, then this isn't for you because you're expected to do that. And if you want that, if that's your passion, that would seem like a hard thing for you to do because it's just ingrained. Um, and you have to do a lot of crap work too. I mean, I mean all of me. And I'm, like, I'm talking like literally, I mean, you know, cleaning out spit cups in rental cars and harness. Like, you do stuff like that, and you get to do a lot of other really things too. But be very aware that there's a lot of work, work and you still do it when you're not sitting up here. And even in 10 more years, I hope I'm still going to do that because it's, you never make it and then you're a big, you know, important somebody. You're always doing that kind of work. But again, if that's not ingrained in you, if that's not something you really feel and cool with you, this is not for you. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I will say one thing in addition to that, because she's exactly right. Um, and and that was always a little scary to me because I am somebody who needs moments outside of this. I need moments outside of it for clarity and rejuvenation and for creativity. And I need moments with my friends and my husband who have nothing to do with this industry. I need moments with my three cats that have nothing to do with this industry. Um, and so there is still room for, um, there's still room for, for all of that too. Um, I think, you know, like I, I will get some of the women that I admire most in this industry and they have, you know, three kids and a husband and family and, and and they're still making those calls at nine o'clock at night and they're still keeping up on their email. Like, you know, you can do all of that too. And I find it really important to kind of separate sometimes. I would say this industry is definitely not eight to five. I mean it's just you know it's just not that. So if you are looking to work sixty plus hours when you get out of college, probably not the industry for you. If you are looking to make a shit ton of money, also not the industry. <laughs> um, I think that with hard work naturally, you know, comes success. And so if that happens along the way, but it's certainly not something that's guaranteed right off the bat. So certainly keep that in mind. Um, and something that I want to just elaborate on as far as relationships, don't wait to get into the industry to create those relationships because the person next to you is also going to join the industry. You all are college students. But all of you are going to be in the industry working together. So don't be mean to your neighbor that you don't like that's on campus because chances are you're going to be working alongside them. Or they could be like Gina and they may have to hire you. So don't burn big bridges. Be nice because I, I really do think that the people that are most successful really are just genuinely nice. Uh, and that industry is built for it. So let that certainly stay with you. Um, one the last thing that I kind of wanted to leave with, so I didn't let them do a few Q and um, are what is one thing? Um, this is kind of a two part question. What is one thing that you think our industry is missing? And then I'm curious to know um, the biggest mistake that you constantly see being made by an artist, whether it's not carrying out the brand, um, and then kind of go back to the industry question. So. What it is on the same. So, so though, I mean, I don't know what this is, I guess, confusing, but just thinking about you guys saying brand, and I know what we were talking about earlier, I think such an important thing as an artist is going to be involved. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, we, we, we talked a lot about brand before, but like, it, it, you know, it's hard for us to you know, figure out who our jobs and work with you if, if you are confused. You know, so if you are an artist and, um, a mistake that they can make is not taking that time for themselves to figure out, okay, what do I want? Who am I? What can I do? If you, you know, like you have to start there, but then then you can be like, okay, great, let's take it all and run with it. So I would say that's probably a mistake that someone else can, you know, make mistakes. Okay, well, I think you're a little bit more interesting. You know, that's what you're saying to be like some hardcore gender, you know, pure. You know, a came from great family, we're a straight A student, debutante. You know, they don't, don't try to be something you're not. Maybe you are, and your audience is going to hear that and feel that and find you. And part of what people look for is unique. You know, like an artist has to be unique to really gravitate towards them, um, you know, to want to hear you know, more about it. So that's very, 
And same applies to when you're working in the business. Yeah, you are. That was, that was really something for me to learn because I started as a regional and a bunch of regional reps are out partying every night and stay, you know, go into the clubs and stay and not wait after the show. And that's just never been me. So I found, you know, at first I was, at first I was afraid of that, you know, was going to set me apart, but they did. I found ways to get those guys to count on me. And that was that I did what I said I was going to do. Their tickets were at the middle hall would know that, you know, I told them that they were going to be there. I was four and nine, I the schedules together. But that's who I am, and so I was able to do that well. I'm not the girl that's going to be out, you know, trashing the radio guys and artists at, you know, one or two o'clock in the morning, and that's okay. But as long as you stay to do that, who you are as a person from day one, you're going to be okay. You just have to be authentic as a person from the business too. Thank you guys so much. Um, we'll probably take like three questions or so. Do you, does anyone have any questions? I should ask that first. You were so brilliant. What? That's right. I didn't hear all these challenges. I mean, I. We might have a whole slew of answers. I, you know, one of the things, the biggest challenge I'm facing right now is the Scotty's in the front row. I think, I think one of the many challenges we're facing um, are, you know, the value of our music. I mean, we're in an industry, I and mean, we're working at a record label, and that requires that people buy our music so that we are still here tomorrow. And uh, the digital, you know, landscape is, is changing. I mean, there is an absolute shift for streaming. And what does that mean for our business model? And what does that mean for, um, you know, the choices that we make, um, you know, tomorrow and in the next six months and in the next six years? I think that, um, I think that technology is a huge challenge. Um, and I think that, you know, it's how are we going to continue to make money? And what does that look like for us? I think that's one of the biggest. Number one, do you guys need to be like yours? And how do we know what after he's going to be Sam Hunt? You know, he's the number one definitely going out the week after week after week, and his now hits, and everybody's, you know, uh, drawn to that. And why? And how do we know? He's like, yes, we're only human. But guess what? That's another artist who's unapologetically himself. He doesn't do her baggy pants. He has socks and he doesn't care. We I mean, love him because that's who he is. Yeah. You know, it's not long before in America, you know, and I was like, this is weird, but it doesn't matter. Like, he's the number one selling people. Um, and I love that, even though he's not ours. I love that because it's impossible. So we can have that next act with that. But that's a huge challenge of finding that act and making it sell. Like Mary Force said, that keeps it worse. And you know, another thing I think is just, I mean, like, how am I talking to the consumer? Like, how am I getting their attention? Mm -hmm. You know, there is just so much going on. I mean, I sit down at my desk and I start sending an email and then the phone rings and I'm on the phone and then, you know, our GM comes in the front door and that's just a very, you know, a small metaphor for what is out there. Right. And, you know, and who is our country consumer? And, um, and there are probably a variety of answers to that. So our country consumer, you know, listen to pop music and you know, and rock music too. I mean, I, I think there's a lot of variations on who the country consumer is and that's changing. And I think it's, you know, how are we, um, how are we finding those people, and how are we making sure that they're hearing our message? It's like, you know, and this is just, you know, a small example, but you know, I feel like everybody understands that Randy Hauser has had. Read that to back number one singles and then followed it up with the top clock for sports And I was talking to somebody the other day and I and they very clearly didn't know that. And I'm like, why do you not know that? I mean, you know, it's just that they challenge to to get whatever that message is, make sure that people know it. I mean, it's just like there's so much noise out there now. Yeah. You know, like, I mean, how many websites do we all visit? How many different websites do we all visit? Okay. And how many of those websites can we place them on to get a message across? And that's just looking at web as well. It's not even looking at kind of TV or social media and every other way there is to find out about music. 
there used to be a, 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 a triple a triple email you know, rule of thumb and I would advertise it was like you can't three times or three times show us how in this and your tweet is in here. And your tweet has already disappeared, it's sort of already on the things that you see, you know, it's trying to figure out how to have through the chat and the rulings and get that consistent message I don't think anything would change, like I mean since the beginning of time we're trying to get your attention and we want you to be our fans and we want you to find our music. It's just that everything is amplified. It's like we were on volume five and now that has been turned up to hundred. There is so much noise out there. And so it's just a challenge. You guys all kind of talk about having in radio is so important, but I kind of feel like for other genres it's not as important. And why do you think it's continued to be like at the top of the Whereas not so much that's a good one. Yes. Yeah. Um, when I when I first started, one thing that was thrown at me too, which I love, and I love some of the different challenges, I didn't even do the industry and service, but we had a pop mix in Carolina, a family song. And so I got to be the person in Nashville that was talking to our pop team in New York about working the song um, to the pop stations. So that's just one format to compare to. But the only thing that I, the one thing I got out of that really is that on the countryside, Radio and fans are um, loyal to that act. So once the act is in their brain and in their heart, they can put out all the film, all the, you guys should probably get support. Like, That's the best thing I've ever heard. On the pop side, I don't think it's necessarily um, artist driven as it is song. So, um, on the, and like I said, and I'm a country fan and that's all I've ever worked with. I'm guessing this, but when I listen to the river, you know, I'm hearing a, a variety of songs that I don't even know who the artist is. And the songs move really fast. So in radio world, we're spinning that song. We've been playing that song on the top side somewhere between like 85 and what? It's got maybe 100 and 15 times a week. And then on the countryside, it's much more normal for them to spin maybe like 40 to 60 times a week um, on a hot song. So I think it's not as um, loyal to it as far as the artist side. But the pop -up. If I'm guessing, and that's really just what they need to guess, because I will say it's a good thing. But I, you know, I haven't worked in, you know, any other genre of music. I mean, you know, we try to have some experience in other genres, and I'm not able to chime in here. You know, I mean, CMA is a commission to study, um, a music discovery study. And the number one way that people discover music in our format is kind of the radio. Um, so while, I, while I'm no expert in other formats, for us, it's incredibly important because that's still the number one way that people are discovering music. You know, I would guess too that in terms of the way we're adopting, you know, other technologies and services, um, you know, our format, I, I would think that uh, we have to get a turn here is probably not as as immediate um, in terms of the way other formats we adopt a spot of, like the way that you know a uh, pop genre, you know. Fans of that probably skew maybe a little bit younger, although our younger numbers are, are growing and growing and really continue to grow. I think that that you know country fans aren't really up to some of that new technology and some of them, um, you know, I feel like it was it was a battle for iTunes, you know, years and years ago. It's like, what is this? Are we really gonna use this? And it's like and and yes, you know, that happened, but it, I think it takes a little bit longer of a time in terms of the Things shifting in our format just in general, and I think that as long as you know, the research continues to say that you know, country radio is the number one way that people are, are finding you know, new music, it's just going to continue to drive what we do. I mean, it, it, without a doubt, it, it drives what we're doing on a big basis. Well, we made it a, I mean, you all have made it a priority to make sure that the relationship with their can radio too. I would venture to say that it's like not like that in other formats. They really was constantly thinking of the country artists. Um, and they feel like they know them. Zero is a perfect fit. It's such a personal relationship. Right. Relations. Like, I know that. There's not one. I, I have a quick, great example. I was visiting the country station in Phoenix a couple of weeks ago, and I was <coughs> visiting there to have one for the radio station with the guy that was the program director there. Well, he's also the program director for the pop station. And I wish I remember the artist name, you guys probably know. She was there and she was performing like in their, you know, the same room or whatever. <coughs> but I was watching the interaction of the artist and the, this pop artist and the rep with my with 
our program director, and it was very distant. And we had our artists there. Our artists were doing basically all the up. Like, hey, we were hanging out with them the whole time and building that relationship. Well, it got to the point where even when she was supposed to come out on the stage, because our program director was like, hey, hang out. So I'm, I'm glad that I got to be doing this. But she was supposed to have they had listeners in there, and she was supposed to be here 20 minutes late getting up on the stage at a radio station. Like, I'd be killing my artists if they were five minutes late. Because, again, our format's built on that loyalty and relationships, like Mary Moore said. Um, and so the difference was really interesting for me to watch. And it was like it was just like, you know, that's what I got. It's so unique to our format. It really is. I mean, there's not, I don't know if there's even a side line that's just unique. Yeah. And it's hugely important, but that's not to say that we don't need to be everywhere. I mean, these, you know, the, the Pandora's and the Spotify's and the Rhapsody's and, you know, the Sirius XM, I mean, all of those things are, are hugely important to our world. We need to be everywhere. We need to be because those people, you know, those services are absolutely talking. To a consumer who's also discovering music. It, it's just, I think, we need to maybe country the, the, the role and the relationship again to go back to that work because it's so important in this, in this format. Uh, the relationship that we have with country radio and how important it is um, in terms of um, you know, creating an artist's career, which is so one last question. Do you have any advice or recommendations on resumes or interviewing? What do you look for when you have to stand out to This time, sorry. When's the last time you go to the resume? Well, this is, I guess this is a little, it doesn't exactly address your question, but one thing that I always tell anybody that is going, you know, where you guys are at right now, um, that internships and those opportunities for volunteering for where you're interacting with those of us who are already working in the industry are so important to, they're just so important to A, build those relationships, B, work hard, do anything that's asked of you, show that you care, show that you want to learn, show that it matters, because they're, I mean, and, and I'm not, I guess, telling probably any people, we have interns that come in that are amazing, we have interns that come in that are okay, you know what I mean, but it is so, I mean, and I'm not trying to, it's just one of those things where people take notice of those people that are working hard and doing everything they can and putting themselves out there and asking questions. And as far as our company is concerned, they're, they're, I probably have four or five of my more interns when I did an internship for you know, four and a few years have been hired since then. You know, we look internally and then also, let's say there was a you know, kind of volunteer or, you know, that we know that, hey, this person is a hard worker. I saw them, you know, here and here. It's such a word of mouth type of thing. So it's not necessarily directly to the <coughs> answer your question about a resume, but when it comes to interacting with these people, make yourself known and make sure that you are looking here because somebody's always watching. And I think that that's, I mean, I've given little recommendations to people to say, hey, I don't really know this person that well, but, you know, it, it goes a long way. And so we don't talk just, sorry, um, we don't talk just once or something. Yeah, you know a lot of people in town, but yeah, mm -hmm. so if there's a company that you're interested in, and we think the world of you, we definitely consider the work for you guys some things. It's a really small amount, and it's all built on Well, and the thing that I was going to say too is do your research. And this probably, in this particular instance, probably doesn't have quite any degree because you're all in school in this market. But in my K-28, I did a group of students that are at Marshall University or are in Boston or wherever. And they are, you know, they have a little bit of so they either did summer with CMA and festival. And they would want to come to town for a meeting. I'm so happy to take those meetings and then have coffee and give some advice. But don't come into town during CMA Fest. Don't come into town during CMA awards. Don't come into the international airports. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but do your research, and because those are those are weeks or lots of time that are out there in the public space that are the worst times imaginable to reach to, to reach out to the community because everyone's so smart and so on and so So do that research before you reach out and with those meetings. It, it will be really awesome when you're in this And along the research end, when I was interviewing for. 
I was going to work in. Some of the questions that, just for some of the answers that I get, like if they're really complicated, I was asking him, what music you like? And his first answer, well, was, well, definitely we're not based on these. So, well, okay, you should be, it's not a more money answer, so. <laughs> or if you have your opinions, but let's not fix your part. Or if somebody's asking you to do your research about those companies, and then that you're talking to, so you know a little bit about maybe anything you can find on them, their background, or where they've been, or the company that they work for. You know, there's been situations where you're talking, I was talking with people or other people were like, well, you know, tell me who are two of our new artists that you like and they're the, the new shop back because they have no idea who's on your label. And, just, you know, from a art aspect, I feel like you're like, okay, well, if you don't know anything about us, why do you even want to work here? You know, and then so I think that's so cool. It was one Google search. Or you can call it that. I I'm still in like this weird dual role where I'm still a student, I'm still doing CMA and stuff, and then I'm also doing actual work stuff. And it's like my parents and everyone makes fun of me that like with your research, like do your stopping, and that's our generation, that's our work. Stop yes. Like learn what they do, learn all the artists on every label, learn what songwriters are, what publishing company, learn who does what. And use that to your advantage. Like I, I pride myself in saying that I'm really pretty knowledgeable about just about every aspect of the industry except for radio, which I have had in my notes to learn about. Um, but just like teach yourself things. And I'm like my friends can totally attest. Like I'm such a nerd when it comes to like resumes and business cards and LinkedIn and stuff like that. I love it. But I can. Say that I have never once used my resume. I've never had an interview, and I've given away plenty of business cards. So nobody's actually asked for one. <laughs> but like, it's again, it's all about it's all about relationships. It's all about being knowledgeable because just in general, if you have to seek out opportunities on your own, you can't expect your internship coordinator at your school to find you an internship. If you can't intern until you're a junior or senior, don't wait till you're a junior or senior. Find someone that will let you work on the table because it's it's so it's so different. Um, in just a, the past couple of years of internship laws, how strict companies have gotten about it, like they will not go near you if you can't get credit. But you can still find the little ones that are more willing to do that for you. Um, or even just not answer and just volunteer or reach out during CMA Fest and work something like that. Or there, there are plenty of things that just that have like freelance lists. Like WSM has a little list that, that they do volunteer stuff and they are a sponsor on events. And so it's just a matter of going out there and figuring out who's in charge of things. And, Trying to get in there and get your name out there. Network with people. I I can also say that like I, I moved to town two days after I graduated high school and started living with a guy from Craigslist. Who do you know over there that you can set up a dinner like me? 
you know, who can you introduce me to over there that I can get their attention and then and then help me make a case over there. And and to be resilient and to um, and to not get frustrated. But having someone call me that I trust and say you gotta talk to this person, I mean that's it. And I think you guys are in a unique position now in CMA and EU and the yeah, I mean, There's we didn't have that just a couple years ago. There was pretty much the only way of meeting people was in a And now you can sit with people and they're in a meeting for somebody else and maybe you can learn somewhere. So your friends are really in your network group now. They're going to continue to rise, they're going to continue to rise, and they're going to have other jobs, and they're going to meet other people. Um, so it's really a community of that you all can really cling on to and help each other out. Thank you guys so much. Thank you for coming.